Hello and welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Scott Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. You don't know what the man, you are fired up. That's from Gulu, Africa, means I have victory over my enemy. When I preached over there to about a thousand pastors, that's all they did. I love it. I love the energy. You can tell the more energy you have, the more energy there is in the room. So if you have victory over your enemy, be loud on three. One, two, three. There it is. Hey, give a huge hand clap to those that are visiting us from online, the podcast, vidcast, whatever cast they are. We're so glad that you join us. Don't forget about our daily wake-up show. It's five to seven minutes long, gets you energized, gets you ready for the day. You can text that number so that every morning you just get a text, you just click on it, it takes you right to the wake-up show. What a great Bible study to start your day off with, with your kids, with your family, with those that are around you, whatever, get your day kind of rolling. So uh, St. Peter's up at the gates and uh, kind of a long line today, but he's, you know, he's, he's like, you know, I don't find out why people are here. What happened? What happened? How'd you get here today? So the first gentleman walks up, and St. Peter says, so how'd you get here? What happened? What happened today that got you here up to heaven? The guy said, well, here's the thing. I live up on the 30th floor uh, apartment, and I know my wife is messing around. I know it. And so he's like, so I went, like I was going off to work and waited a little while, and then I barged in there, and, you know, my wife is screaming, and the screams, and I'm going to find him. I know he's in there somewhere, and I'm looking in the closet, and I look under the bed, right? I'm looking all over the place, and finally I look out the window, and here's a guy hanging from the ledge, right, hiding on me, and so I open the window, and, and I stomp on his fingers, right? I stomp on him until he falls 30 stories, but he lands in some bushes. He's like, and he's all right, so I'm so angry. I look around, I grab a refrigerator, and I throw it on the window out on top of him, and I'm, I'm so happy and excited. I have a heart attack, and that's how I got here. And so St. Peter says, all right, all right, whoa. It was a fired up day. Well, a couple people later, a guy in a jogging outfit, and he says, how'd you get here? The guy says, well, here's the thing. I live up on the 30th story, and you know, I, I, I just, I, I like the excitement of being out on the ledge and getting the fresh air in the morning, and so I walk on out there, and he says, but I slipped. But he said, thank God, I grabbed myself. He's like, and then I'm trying to pull myself up, and then all of a sudden, a gentleman shows up. I'm like, praise God, God sent me an angel, a helper. But all of a sudden, he starts stomping on my fingers. And so I'm falling, and I'm I'm praying, and thank God, I landed in some bushes. I'm like, God, God is good. And then he threw a a refrigerator on top of me, and that's how I'm here. And so St. Peter kind of shook his head. He kind of put the things together. He's like, oh, that's fine, you know, kind of interesting. Next guy comes up, and he, he, he's barely got any clothes on. He's sopping wet. And St. Peter says, what, what, how, how'd you get here? The guy said, well, picture this. I'm hiding in a refrigerator. Come on. I like that one. Open up your Bibles to Matthew 5, uh, 14 through 16 today. <laughs> we start a brand new, I am so pumped up, uh, series today called The Voice. Learning to be a voice in the places that God has positioned you. You know, He has positioned you in a job. He has positioned you in a neighborhood. He has positioned you, right, in a family. Thanksgiving's coming up. He's positioned you. What kind of voice are you going to be to the lost in that environment? Are you going to be a voice of light? Are you going to be a voice of hope? Are you going to be a voice that represents God that is turning the brokenhearted and those that are living in the darkness to the light? What kind of voice are you going to be? And I got the idea, Holly gave me the idea of the TV series. How many people have seen The, the Voice? Anybody? Right, the voice, right? It's pretty fun. If you haven't seen it, here's how it is, and I'm going to show you a video soon because I want you to get the experience of how God's given. What a great example that he's given. So so how it works is is there's, of course, the audience, and there's four judges, and their backs are turned, and they're kind of facing the darkness. They, they, They can't see what's going on in the stage. A singer comes out, and the singer begins to sing, right? And so all the audience is all in anticipation because if the judge turns around, that means, hey, I want this singer on my team. And so they're singing and singing, and then, boom, the judge turns around, everything lights up, the audience screams and gets excited. And here is a video so that you can kind of see that experience. Wow. Now, here's, here's, here's the example for you. The audience represents the angels. 
all of heaven. Because all the heaven is anticipating and so excited, waiting for the judges who represent those that are lost in your life, who are facing the darkness. You and I are the ones that are entertaining in a sense. We're bringing an experience to them. And the experience that they hear, the experience that they have with us, determines when they turn away from the darkness and toward the light, and all of heaven gets excited. But you're the voice. What kind of voice are you? See, are you a judgmental, a condemning? Do you get around the Thanksgiving table and you're telling all those that are unsaved what's wrong and you shouldn't be living here and you shouldn't be doing this and this is wrong? Is that the voice? Or are you a voice like Jesus Christ? See, that kind of shameful, condemning voice makes the judges not want to turn around. They're judging you. They're looking at your life. But when you walk in and I've got love and I've got compassion, and see, we can't judge the world by our standards. That's not fair to them. They can't judge them on our, they don't understand our standards. They're like, well, why can't I do this? And why is that wrong? And it doesn't draw them to Christ. But instead of judging them by our standards, we love them with the love of Jesus Christ right where they're at. We give them some compassion. We walk into, the, see, when I walk into the office and I'm down and I'm, I'm moody and I'm angry, see, that's the wrong voice. But if I walk in and I got a smile on my face, Right? And I am just, life is good. I walk into my home with my kids. My kids should see something different in my home than they see in the neighbor's home. There is a voice that I want to be speaking into their life. And if I want them to continue to come to me, then I have to have the right voice. I got a buddy that about every uh, couple years, it's been since high school, calls me up. It's always when there's trouble going on. And he's like, pastor, right? Didn't call me pastor 30 years ago. But now he's like, pastor, hey, here's what's going on. And every couple of years, you know, the, the girlfriend's leaving and this is going on. I'm trying, I got this, th this, this thing with the job, right? And, 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 and I don't judge and I don't tell them what's wrong. I don't tell them, I don't even tell them you got to get into church in a sense. I just give them, not scriptures, because the scriptures, you know, they don't, they don't matter to him. I just give them biblical wisdom and some biblical principles. And he's like, well, and he always says, Pastor, you mind throwing me a prayer? Oh, yeah, I always throw you a prayer. I always throw a prayer. And I know that I could. I could judge and I could condemn and tell them exactly all the things that need to change. Or I can continue to be a voice year after year. And there's going to come a time that I know I'm going to get a phone call. He's like, hey, I'm ready. Whatever this church thing is, I need this church thing in my life. Come on, somebody. See, I got I to remain an open voice. I got to be a voice to a dying world. We have a lot of voices. I've been listening to voices, like our inflection and how we say things. It's big. I've been listening to my wife's voice, and her voice alone can say a million things in just her voice. Scott, you know, and she's like looking for me. It's kind of fun, right? Or Scott, like she's looking for me. It's not as fun. You know what I'm saying? Not or she'll call me Pastor Scott. How many people know when she calls me Pastor Scott? That's not a good thing. Pastor Scott. Do we do that, Pastor Scott, right? Or she'll go, Scott. That's a different voice. <laughs> the chair turns around right away. We hit the button. I'm on your team. I tried this uh, last week. It's just, a, it, what a great title. In our, the voice that we have, whether it attracts or pushes people away in our world. And I did this little thing with my dog. My dog, I've had Max for one year now. And uh, oh my God, his emotions are so extreme, right? And so here's a little uh, a video about Max and my inflection. Come on, what are you doing? Who's a puppy? Come on, Max. What are you doing? Come on, puppy. Come on. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, hey. What'd you do? Huh? Come here. Come here. Come on. Hey, come here. Come on. Max, come here. Yeah, hey. Who's a puppy? You <laughs> I have to let you know. No animals were hurt in the taping of this. But it is interesting that the, an inflection of joy and happiness and excitement is something that is drawing even to a dog. But as soon as it becomes condemning, becomes shameful, he, it's nearly impossible to get them to come. And the same thing for your friends that you have been placed. When I have a right voice. Some of you saw that. 
At the Thanksgiving table, the, the voice that maybe we've been using isn't drawing people to us. They don't even want to be around us. I got to have a proper voice in my life in the place that God has positioned me because he has position. I had a lady um, come up. Now, this is a few years ago, and she, was, she said, hey, pastor, I'm up for a promotion. It's between me and another lady. Can you just say a prayer? Can we pray? And so we prayed for her promotion. And the next week, I, I saw her walking by, but she was kind of blown by me. And I'm like, hey. And, I'm like, and she turned, and I go, how'd, the, how'd it go with the promotion? You got it. She goes, no, no, I didn't get the promotion. And I'm like, and she went, I'm like, well, come, 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 come. I said, well, what? she's like, no, we prayed, and we didn't get it. So it didn't work. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. And I said, well, hold on. And she said, hold on. Things sometimes, we don't know God's timing. We don't know he's got something better. We don't know all of those things. I said, you know, when Joseph interpreted the dream, there was a period. He thought right away he was going to get something, at least get out of jail. I said, there was a period of time of waiting until the right moment. I don't know what God has. I said, but be like Joseph. Just be great where you're at. Continue to bring joy in your place. And so when we got done, she kind of got a little happy. And she said, all right, all right, Pastor. I got Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. I was down. I'm going to get back. Four weeks later, she comes up and she's like, Pastor, okay, here's the thing. Okay, my assistant, which if I'd have got the promotion, she wouldn't have been my assistant. She came to me and her life is broken, upset. I, I, I ministered to her, talked to her, and she got saved. She's like, this was the reason I didn't get the promotion, to save one person. And here's the thing, folks. Now, I want you to see this. One eternity is more important to God than you getting a little raise that he can get you at a little time. Now, watch this, though. About two months later, she comes up and she goes, I got a promotion. How many people know that God has a reason why you are placed where you are at? Because he needs some voices. He needs to speak through you. He's got to be a bright light through you. And the voice and the way that your world experiences you either draws them or it pushes them away. It keeps them in the darkness. They're like, well, why would I want? Or it's something that they're like intrigued by. Okay, why is? Okay, they're happy. The way you come into the office, how, you, how the world experiences you is so important. I was uh, taking a uh, flying back. Some of you remember, I, I preached out in Washington about maybe four or five weeks ago. And, uh, and so, I, especially when a church pays for my flight, I'm very frugal. And so I always get, for the most part, you know, middle seat in the back by the toilet. That's, what, that's, right, that's the said Scotty seat. I preached hard, and so I'm looking at my ticket, and I'm like, oh my God, 11A. I said to God, I go, God, you're so good to me. You smile. You give me 11A. I'm up front. You're such a good God. And uh, right before they started to board, all of a sudden over the loudspeaker, they said, Scott Anderson, come up to the, the ticket booth. And uh, I saw it right away. I'm like, oh my gosh, God, are you kidding me? Is this for my birthday? I'm getting first class, right? <laughs> Which every seat to me is first class. You know what I'm saying? But, but it's fine. And so I'm excited. I'm like, so I go up and I know, yeah, I'm going to get first class. And so I get up there and, and, and the lady behind the, the thing says, hey, um, would you mind switching seats uh, with this lady? And I, I, I was like, and I'm trying to hold my face. I'm like, and I go, oh, um, like, where, where's the seat? I don't know what seat. And she goes, well, she's got 31B. 31B. I said, that's toward the back. She goes, no, that's the last one. That is in the very back. I said, by the toilet? She goes, yeah, by the toilet. So I'm keeping a little... And so I'm like, um, I'm trying to think of something godly. I could, I'd like something to get me out of this mess because this is not God's plan. 11A was God's plan. I know that. And so I'm like, um, why? And she kind of pointed like this. And finally, I looked over at the lady and it was a, it was a blind lady. And so I'm like, and so now... I'm trying, like, what do you do as a pastor? Like, you know, like, and so I'm trying to smile, and I had, can I, and I'm going to be human with you for a second. Can I, well, you guys don't judge me on this, right? Because this is really bad, right? But I had a, a really bad thought, and it was really quick, and then it went away. Like, it just hit my head, right? And I'm like, well, just tell her we switched seats, put her in her same seat, she'll never know. Like, it was a bad, it's a horrible, I know, I apologize. It was a horrible thought I had. No, I know, it was so bad. I, right away I went, sorry, God, I apologize. I'm so bad. So I go, um, so I just said, yeah. I said, I would love to. I would, I would love to give her my seat. That sounds, sounds great. I, I would love that. And she goes, oh, great. She goes, you know what? This is so sweet of you. We want to give you a couple uh, 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 vouchers for some, some free alcoholic drinks. And, right, and of course, I'm like, I'm a pastor. I'm not going to indulge in your sin of the world and the flesh. 
never say that. I don't care. Whatever. No, I, I just don't like, honest to God, I just don't like the taste. And so I go, well, I don't like alcohol. I just don't like the taste of alcohol. I'm sorry. I just don't like that. Right? And then all of a sudden, all around me, everybody now has got their, they're like, oh, I'll take it. Right? Nobody wants to give their seat up. But yeah, we'll take free booze. And so I got the tickets and I just hand it to a guy. You know, this is compliments of Living Word Bible Church. Should I? Well, we build strong homes and families. Enjoy. So he gets, my, he gets my alcohol tickets, and she goes, yeah, that's so sweet. She goes, you know what, let me, let me get you on, uh, on the plane right now. So she took me and got me up on the plane, and it is all the way in the back. It's in, I get to my middle seat, and they're sitting, the, the, you know, they let the, 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 the uh, military personnel get on first, and there's a big old military guy, like he's big. He's, the, he's just husky. He's, you want him fighting for your country. He's just big, 6'2". <laughs> Three, right? He's in the window seat right there. And I look, and I'm like, happy. But then I go, in my mind, I go, well, I'm not going to get any armrest. That, that, one, that armrest is dead. And it's not like he's mean. He's just big. And that's his armrest and his chair. And so I sit down. And, hey, how are you? And, and, and so I'm over. I'm kind of, but I got this whole other seat over here. Praise God. And so it, we're about all done with loading. And I look over, and I went, God, you're so good to me. I'm going to scoot over. I'm going to get in that chair. I'll have both armrests. I'll kind of be able to lay out. I said, God, you, you just make, you, you, you make everything good. And then all of a sudden, light was blotted out. There was no light. And I went and I looked up, and the biggest gentleman I've ever seen in my entire life, I've never seen anybody this big. The guy had to be seven foot tall. He had to play some sort of, pro he's older now, but some professional sport or he was a bus. I, he was one of those things. I, like, he was a big. He said, he's like massive. And he's all, that's my seat. And I'm like, they're all your seat, my friend. You can have whatever seat you want. <laughs> Everything is all, it's your world, baby. And so he turns around and he squeezes in, right? And then he gets himself ready to sit down. Now here's the armrest. I want you to picture this with me. And he sat right where his backside hit, and then it lapped over the armrest about that much, just so you all can get, it was about that much in my chair right now. And I looked and I go, he's not gonna be able to sit down, that's not gonna happen, right? And he went, he let out his breath, and he went, whoo, like this. And it went, and it made a suction, and whoo, and it put him right, right? And then I heard something, I've maybe you heard, I've never heard it before, the chair actually screamed. I've never heard it before, it let out a scream. And he was now in the seat. And all I see is, this is all, everything is him now. My whole world is him. And for the next four hours and 17 minutes, we aggressively were touching. That's just a fact. It was, it was not like we meant to touch. We had no option but to touch. He'd have touched me less if he'd have laid on top of me. This is where we touch. From here to about here. I could move my leg a little bit and get it out of the way. Everything else, our leg was touched, our arm was, we touched so much, so aggressively that I was sopping wet from sweat. Our bodies were meshed together. His sweat and my body heat and we just, and maybe nervous, I don't know, and we just sweat. I think in some cultures we're actually married now. I don't know, I, I, I don't know. Four hours and 17 minutes are just there. We're in the air, and the flight attendant comes over, and she's like, like a drink. I can't see her. And so I got to peek like this, and there's like a little spot. And she peeks over like we're looking. And I'm like, it's her. It's the one that put me in prison. It's the her. And I could tell she looked at me. She's like, sorry. And I'm like, I want to strike. Right? But I was just smiling. I'm just happy. I'm a happy pastor. I'm like, hey, how are you? And she's like, what drink you want? I'm like, you know what? I think I'll have that alcoholic beverage. I, th I think I'll, I'll do them. I did. I didn't say that. I thought it though. I'm like, maybe that'll make it better. I don't know. I said, this is a cranberry juice. would be fine. She said, all right. You all good? I'm like, I'm doing great. Thank you. Get my little cranberry juice. And we, we land. And, and so now we're walk I'm walking down the aisle. I'm sloshing because all the sweat now is in this right shoe. Just walking down the little aisle. And I see her. And, and there she is greeting. And, and I'm like, hey, you guys did. And I always do that. I always, I want to be an encourager. So I'm like, you did so great. Thank you so much. What a, what a terrific job. And she looks. She goes, you are such a trooper. She says, you are like, he says, the most passengers never would have handled that like you handled it. I said, well, you know, I'm a pastor, and so I, I try and set the bar a little bit higher for myself. And, so, and she's like, well, pastor, have a good day. And so off I went. I'm walking back, and I walk down the little tarmac thing, and the, I walk down, going to the baggage claim, go down the little scooter, you know, long walk. And uh, I've gone quite a ways, and all of a sudden, somebody taps me on the shoulder, and I look around, and it's her, and she's kind of out of breath. 
And you could tell there was something going on. And I said, what's, what's, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, are you trying to finish me off here? What are we doing here? Like, I didn't know. <laughs> I'm like, what's, and she goes, um, I'm real nervous about this. The crew, they, they told me to catch up. They think that this is some sort of sign or something. Um, but just moments ago, I got a text that my mom is being rushed to the hospital. It looks like she's she ha- she having a heart attack. And I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't go to church. I've never been to church. I don't know. How to, I don't know. And I'm just hoping maybe you could just, on your way, if it's not too much, if you could just say a prayer. If you could just throw a prayer out there. And I said, of course I would. And I, I grabbed her hands and I said, hey, let's just pray. And I did just a really, just a great prayer. The Spirit was speaking through me. And then we got done. And I said, hey, here's how it's going to work. God's going to do some great things. And in the meantime, time, his peace is going to fill you up and it's going to surpass. And I just gave her a mini sermon, right? I should have taken an offering, right? It was just a mini sermon. <laughs> I'm just talking to her there, right? And man, we, probably five minutes and all of a sudden her phone, she's like, hold on, hold on. She's like a lot of things and she grabbed it and she, all of a sudden her face lit up and she's like, okay, my sister just texted me and the doctor says it, it wasn't a heart attack. It was just bad. She just had gas and, and it was no big deal. And I said to her this, I said, hey, I said, that's what the doctors do when they can't explain a miracle. I said, God just worked and did a miracle in your mama's life. And she began to cry. We got a hug. And then she got saved in that moment. And here's my point to you guys out there. Had I been like a lot of us, and even old, maybe old Scotty sometimes, if I'm not feeling it right, right? If I was mad and upset and angry and I walk off the plane and I let them have it because of how I was treated, because I was right. How many people know there's times that we're right and we should be able to say what we are feeling. Had I done that, I'd have missed a window of opportunity that God had presented me with to change an eternity. And my discomfort, I'm telling you all day long, is worth someone's eternity. And the same thing for you. A little bit of discomfort in life. How many times? Now, I'm a forward-thinking pastor, so let's not go backwards on this. I I think all of us, myself included, there have been times when I wasn't the light that I should have been, then I wasn't the voice, and I let the waitress know, and I let the Starbucks worker know, and I I walked away and go, ah. But what if going forward, we begin to think of things in the matter of eternity? That waitress has an eternity that's important to God. That coworker has an eternity that's important to God, right? That, that, that relative who, who just gets on everybody's nerves and is so messed up has an eternity that's important to God. How can I remain a voice? I don't have to tell them what's everything wrong with their life and say everything that's right in my life. What I have to do is buck it up, put a smile on, and be a bright light to a dying world. So that they'll turn those chairs around and all of heaven. Come on, somebody out there. All of heaven. Here's our scripture. Matthew 5, 14 says this. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine. Somebody say, so shine. I love that. The energy behind that right there. I want you to write that down somewhere this week. Put it in front of you so that it is a constant reminder that I'm not just supposed to let my light shine, but I'm not supposed to let it so shine. It is so aggressive and how bright that I'm supposed to be wherever I go. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good stuff. Right? See the good stuff. See a smile when I shouldn't smile. See me brighten up a room and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the thing. Grab your glow stick with me right now. You're like, what a church gives free glow sticks. That is so cool. Here's what we're going to do. They're going to throw the lights down for me a little bit. And I want you to break it. And this symbolizes right here that we were broken before we came to Jesus Christ, were we not? The world did its best to break us. Right? To take us out of the game. We've been broken. Right? But then what happens? We get saved and shake it up. Jesus shakes us up a little bit, right? Right? He says, he wants you to be. You know what's interesting to me? The first thing that God said when all the darkness was on the earth, he said, let there be light. Because he knows the power of light pushing back the darkness. When you got saved, God said the exact same thing. He said, woo, Scotty got saved. Let there be light. Let there be light in Johnny. Let there be light in Sally. Let there be light in everybody that is in this room. And when we are a bright light, 
We push back the darkness. Everybody hide your light. Hide it. Some of you think I can't see. I see your light. Hide it. Hide that light. Put it under a bushel. Amen. So we have rights in this world. And sometimes our rights get in front of our being a light. It gets ahead of it. Because we forget the importance of an eternity. Every person around you is an eternity that God's like, hey, I want you to be a light for. And sometimes we let the negative attitude, sometimes we let the, 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 the storms of life get on top of us. And we walk into the office, because I have a right right now to be upset. I have a right to be mad. Walk into the house, man, it's been a long day, I'm tired, I have a right. But the Bible says, hey, if it affects eternity, why don't you just turn up the light a little bit? Just turn it up. You know, the thing about a light is, light is reflective. You know that we reflect God's goodness into our life. He's shining his bright life. But what I love, uh, the other things, is a light is something that you use to shine, like a flashlight. Now, I can use a flashlight to shine on the bad things. Many times we throw, we throw it on the problems and throw it on the negativity, and we may throw it on people's sin and condemnation, and that's where we shine the light. But I want us to be a group, I want us to be a church that shines a light on the goodness of God. The world will get saved through his goodness and through his love and through his mercy. I want to shine the light on some encouragement. I want to shine the light on some hope. I want to shine the light on the good stuff in life. And here's the other thing. Yes, I mean, you're getting it. The other thing a light does is it illuminates. And here's the thing, Living Word Bible Church, when you walk into a room, you brighten it up. You walk into a circle, okay? Something is different when I walk in. The love of Jesus Christ follow me wherever I go. His glory, His mercy, His kindness, His endures all things. Come on, Living Word. You walk into the place. Somebody get to their feet today. Stand up and shine that light bright. Shine that light bright. We are light to the dying world. We are light. Here's what I want, Living Word Bible Church. I want you to walk like Enoch and be a light. I want you to believe like Abraham and be a light. I want you to stretch like Moses and be a light. I want you to shout like Joshua did at his Jericho and be a light. I want you to be like David and be a light of inspiration. I want you to be like Nehemiah and build whatever is in front of you. Be like Daniel and you pray a light into your life like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego that you are a light of confidence and I want us to live like Jesus Christ and be a light unto the world. Can I get an amen anywhere out there? Be a light. Be a light. You're still here. They you are. You're watching. You're still here. We're glad you're here. I know <laughs> you enjoyed. Stay. Stay. Go nowhere. Just get a few more minutes for you. Give us a, a little more. Can you? Can can I suck a little more out of you about this light and absorbing and... Right? You're a light. So what I bring in is what I give off. And so I didn't get really a chance to, to get too much into the fact that if I'm just surrounding myself with negative, then I give off really, I, right, what, right. I, what, what I absorb is what I seem to, to give off. So you have to be careful how much you're around me. Right? Around, yes, I get too, mu I get too much glory when I get around Jason. Too much. <laughs> I'm too happy. Fine. I'm too excited. <laughs> you know you know that. If you get around some, uh, a negative environment, yeah. man, you, you tend to walk away being negative. And, and then so, you're going to give that off. Right. And I'm not saying we don't get in there and be the light, but we do need to make sure that I first get some positive in me mm. so that when I get in the negative, I can be the light in the midst of the negative. That's a really good word. We want to continue the conversation on this. I want to hear more about this. We're going to do that on our Wake Up. It's our daily morning Bible study. We do a morning scripture. We pray over your day, and you can subscribe to it. We do it every single day. It'll rock your world. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and donate uh, to this ministry, to this cause. I want to make sure you know that your tithe always goes to your, your local church. Uh, but to spreading the gospel, partner with us in the message that we're bringing the world. And you can do that by donating. They're going to show you how to do that on the screen. And if you donate, we're going to get a new table. Um, what I like One about this table wobbly. is it's almost like we're on a ship. So we're trying to give you a ship feel right now. It's so <laughs> rocking back and forth. Hey, I got me in Holly's book on how to get in and out of fights, being married for life. You know, you, you're, you're together. Why not enjoy it? Yeah. Take all that time you spend arguing, right? Just last week, how much time did you spend? And now I can spend that time just building our relationship and having a good time. So it's about getting rid of the dumb arguments, what, the dumb ones. Like yeah. Now we're talking 85, 90% of your arguments that are just waste of time, getting rid of those. And that's what this book is all about. You can get this thing on Amazon or at Jason's house.
That's right. Well, it's, I set up a booth. <laughs> if, if you're ready to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, you heard this message and you felt something move, and, and there's a burning maybe even happening in your heart as you're watching this. I mean, you, you came along on this journey this long and you're, you're still tuning in. It's because God is calling you in this moment. It's not an accident that we're here having this discussion. There was a man that came to Jesus in the middle of the night and he said to Jesus, how can somebody get into the kingdom of God? How can somebody have eternal life? And Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe, I like that, whoever believes would not perish but have everlasting life. So this is a conversation about believing in Christ. And if you can do that, you're just turning your life over to the Lord Jesus. I'm going to say a prayer. The prayer is just there to help you make that choice. So just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. And I ask you, Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't forget to wake up with us all week long. We'll see you tomorrow.